Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take a quick second here with me. It's a nice Saturday morning. You wake up nice and early and uh, the family is still sleeping. The children aren't out on the street yet. It's nice and quiet. And you log into your local Discord server, check whatever bot they're using and see which lost sectors are running today. You think to yourself, hmm, it might be a nice weekend just to grab some more exotics for my character. And you notice that the empty tank is in rotation. And you think, uh, I'm a pretty experienced gamer by now. Nothing wrong with the empty tank. Tangled Shore's on its way out. I don't mind running a few of those. So you fly in, and then you remember that the most jacked, juiced up, Chad Overload Captain is gatekeeping you from anything that you could possibly want. Boys and girls, I've got an endgame titan build that's going to make sure that no one ever hurts you again. <laughs> G'day Guardians, it's Matt here, and I hope you enjoyed that little intro. I am completely serious though, I have a build here that is insanely strong for challenging PvE content. It comes with a couple variations for whether or not you're playing in a fire team or tackling solo content, as well as some changes to which subclass or weapon that you want to run. It'll allow you to tank ridiculous amount of damage with your sword, as well as aggroing a lot of shots for your fire team, which literally will be healing you at the same time. You'll be the ultimate champion killer, stacking multiple different damage buffs on your sword and melting bosses left, right and center. It almost feels like a mini bite-sized version of Ursa Furiosa, but allows you to deal insane damage along the way. We are, of course, talking about the long-forgotten, instantly sharded upon acquiring strongholds. Now, if you were like me and deleted every pair of these before actually reading what they do, well, I'm reformed now, and I've got you covered. Strongholds will maximize guard stats on equipped swords, but also shots blocked immediately after guarding will heal you. The maximum guarding stat is nice, but what we really care for is the healing aspect. A perfectly timed guard just before getting hit will heal you. Before making this build, these guys hadn't even seen the light of day on my titan, but a little while ago, Rogi and I were theorycrafting some builds on underutilized exotics, and he challenged me to make something happen with strongholds that could actually be viable. I wanted to make it practical, but I think I accidentally made a build that's pretty darn good, so I'm really excited to share it. Now, for the subclasses, there are a few options that work best, but it honestly depends on a few factors. Your subclass will be dependent on whether or not you're playing in a fire team or doing solo content, as well as which sword that you want to use. Since we're using elemental well mods, it actually does kind of matter which sword we have. For time's sake of this video, I won't be showing any stasis or arc options purely because we don't have a stasis sword yet and because the arc sword options didn't feel as good. I know Bequest can dish out some good damage and pairing it with Thundercrash might actually be kind of nice, but again, it just didn't feel as good as the options that I'm going to go through. As for kinetic and energy weapons, you would just adjust these for the needs of your activity, so ignore whatever I've got in those slots. Now, option one is my preferred build, which I'm going to cover longer. But for the other options, I'll be just showing the adjustments made to suit their needs better, instead of giving you repeated information each time. But the main question, why? Why run strongholds over anything else? If you aren't confident with things like Legend or Master Lost Sectors, or you're struggling to find your footing within a fire team when going into a Grandmaster, these three stronghold options will help you get your confidence up when tackling these activities. You'll also be able to hold your own without dying, inconveniencing your fire team, and it'll just help you learn different encounters and figuring out all the different fights without any issues. So, option one. This is what I felt to be the best for tackling solo content. We're using Middle Tree Solar for the hammer because this will allow us to stun Overload Champions with the Thermoclastic Strike mod. This can be purchased from the Seasonal Artifact. If we're playing solo, we don't have fire team members to stun Overloads for us, and if we have our sword out, we don't want to be changing to a bow to do that and changing back to our sword. So our trusty hammer is the best option. We're going to be pairing this with Lament as our sword of choice, and for a very good reason too. Firstly, Lament intrinsically has anti-barrier on its attacks, so we don't need to bother with an auto-rifle. When comparing it to other swords currently available, it only just falls short to Crown Splitter for impact, but has marginally better recharge rate on its heavy attack, making it one of the best DPS options for swords, and not to mention its larger ammo capacity in comparison. When comparing it to just the other Solar Sword options, it outclasses Negative Space and Solar Scar in almost every way, making Lament the perfect sword to pair with the Solar subclass. 
And lastly, the revved consumption perk gives us that extra bit of survivability since we're playing solo. For mods, I'm running elemental armaments to generate elemental wells when getting kills with the Lament, which pairs perfectly with Font of Might, which gives that 25% damage boost on the Lament for 10 seconds when I collect that elemental well. Elemental Charge gives me two stacks of charge with light when I collect the elemental well also, and we'll be able to spend those stacks with Lucent Blade, which gives us a further 35% damage buff, stacking very neatly on top of Font of Might's 25%. You'll notice I'm also running Momentum Transfer. This mod itself isn't ideal or necessary to the build, but I'm using it because it's another Arc mod and that helps proc the secondary perk for Lucent Blade, which greatly increases the recharge rate for your sword. This will come in handy to get our heavy attacks ready after taking some big damage with Lament. The cherry on top is Passive Guard, and that lets us take way less damage from enemies when we're up in their grill. The idea with this option is that we're going into a Lost Sector and we are just clearing everything with Lament. Lament will be making our Elemental Wells, we're going to be getting our damage stacks on top of each other and we're just going to clear everything. Passive Guard will let us tank everything and if we're in some big strife we can just pop our Guard and get our way to the enemy safely by creeping slowly and slowly towards them, not taking any damage, but if we do we'll be healing along the way with some perfect deflections. Now, for option number two. This is going to be very similar to option 1, but with some adjustments that allow this build to synergize when playing in a fire team. Option 1 was all about solo content, but now we're trying to mesh strongholds to be a utility piece for harder content with a team. We'll be keeping Lament the same, as it's just too good to pass up with how strong enemies are in endgame content. The first change we'll be making is going down to bottom tree solo though. We have teammates now, we don't need the hammer to stun overload champions anymore, instead we'll want those sunspots to help regen abilities, as well as offer some extra protection in something like Grandmasters. With the addition of teammates, we'll no longer need Thermoclastic Strike, and instead I've replaced that with Taking Charge, since they'll be able to generate orbs for us, turning them into Charge with Light Stacks for Lucent Blade. Meaning, we no longer need Elemental Charge as our source for Charge with Light, and can be replaced with Elemental Ordnance. This gives us another quick and easy way to generate elemental wells. Everything else will remain the same though, getting kills with Lament and our grenade now will spawn elemental wells, those wells will give us the font of might damage buff, and through the gameplay our teammates orbs will be giving us Lucent Blade, keeping us at a nice sustained level of damage boost. Since we're still on the solar subclass, I can imagine some people might assume that running Well of Life would be a good option, although since Strongholds gives us a majority of our health back on a perfect deflection, it becomes kind of pointless, hence why we're going all in on damage. And lastly, our third option. This is where I originally landed with the build, but it felt like it was missing something. It eventually seemed like the damage output just wasn't there compared to Lament, but is still a really viable build option. For this one, we're switching things up and are using Bottom Tree Void for the In the Trenches perk, which just helps reduce our super. Everything else in the other trees aren't particularly viable since they're based around melee kills. Although another great addition to running Void is having Suppressor Grenades, which are extremely useful in high-end content as they basically serve as another blinding grenade. For our sword, we are switching over to an exotic Void Sword, the Black Talon. The Black Talon has two great perks to it. The first one is that we can deal damage from afar with its heavy cast attack, and the second is its catalyst, which synergizes perfectly with strongholds. A perfectly guarded attack increases our damage output for a short amount of time, meaning if we guard at the right time, we'll get our health back through strongholds, and we will get a damage buff to cast out. This extra damage buff does also stack with Font of Might and Lucent Blade, making it pretty lethal. Now, for the mods, we do have to change some things due to the fact that we've changed to the Void subclass. We now have Reaping Wellmaker, which means when we pop our Barricade, our next kill will give us a guaranteed Void Elemental Well. When we pick up that Well, it's going to proc Well of Tenacity, which reduces the damage that we take from enemies for a short period of time. Not only that, the Elemental Well is going to give us our Font of Might damage buff and two stacks of Charge with Light from the Elemental Charge mod. And as always, we'll be able to spend those stacks of Charge with Light on Lucent Blade. Now this option of the build can work in either solo content or in a fire team when tackling Grandmasters. I enjoyed it in both instances. The only drawback is that I did find Lament head and shoulders better as a weapon instead of Black Talon, 
but Black Talon does offer some unique perks that you won't get out of other Void Swords like Falling Guillotine or Crown Splitter. As for the stats in this build, I would highly suggest trying to get 100 Resilience. This will allow you to get your barricade up on cooldown, but also increases your shield capacity, which is really important when you're taking some heavy hits with strongholds. The other stats aren't as important, and I've gone for a pretty all-round distribution, but you could probably aim to have less recovery than you would expect when going into endgame content, purely because the recharge rate is irrelevant due to strongholds giving you heals on perfect deflections. Well. That's all from me, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed the build, please give this video a like so that we can sneak our way into the YouTube algorithm and help our fellow Titan brethren out. If there are any other exotic armor pieces that you'd like to see me or Rogi make a build for, chuck it in the comments and we'll do our best. And as always, take it easy, Guardians.